Hi, I'm Carol Thorpe, and I'm here along with Zach Smith, Drag Device Inventor. Zach is also the head of the research and development team at Fiorentino, who has developed their newest parachute sea anchor. And before we go further, I need you to define exactly what a parachute sea anchor, so, or para-anchor as they call it, is. Sure. A parachute sea anchor is a specially designed parachute that you can deploy off of any type of boat, be it a trawler, multi-hole, or sailboat. Basically, we just attach an anchor rope uh, to this parachute, and as your boat's drifting backwards, we drop this chute into the water, and as soon as it sinks, it's going to inflate rather quickly, which puts tension on the line, pulling your bow or bows into approaching weather. This stabilizes the boat and really slows your drift down. You're talking like half a nautical mile to maybe a nautical mile of drift versus 10 nauticals of, uh, of miles of drift every hour without a parachute deployed. Which is pretty significant. Yeah, it's used quite frequently for safety reasons. Drift fishermen, it's real common for them to deploy one of these chutes to slow it down so they can capture the big fish. And, you know, and it's not like just that. for sailboats. No, it's for all types of vessels. Okay. Now I know you're going to give us a demonstration yes. of these, but first, um, you did 15 years of sea trials oh, and yeah. you did a lot of testing on these yes. items and you found out what the biggest problems are. So what are they? Well, uh, what we were finding is a lot of parachutes were breaking. Uh, one, there was a lot of shock loading uh, being generated mm -hmm. by rope that became slack for too mm -hmm. long a period. Then, of course, it tightens up and yanks your bow into the weather. Um, also, some of the chutes were completely tangling. The canopies were inverting, uh, mm -hmm. turning inside mm -hmm. out. So we learned a few tricks on what to do on, on how to build these chutes to, to avoid those kind of problems. And now you're going to show us. Yes, I am. I'm going to start with right Fiorentino. Ahead. All right. This is a 16-foot diameter Fiorentino parachute sea anchor, and when we determined what kind of fabric we want to use on the parachute sea anchor, basically I towed all kinds of stuff behind tugboats until they, they broke apart, until the chutes broke apart. So the 8-ounce nylon turned out to be the best fabric, we thought, for our particular parachute canopies, making it obviously very strong. Additionally, what we learned through our sea trials was when you add a lot of shroud lines to these parachute canopies, what ends up happening is you create a better hemispherical shape, a circular shape on the parachute when it's uh, deployed. It also makes it a lot more difficult to invert, turn the chute inside out because you have all these shroud lines that kind of create a barrier uh, when the parachute oscillates, oscillating meaning it kind of pulsates like a jellyfish. Additionally, if you have a lot of shroud lines uh, attached to a chute, the more you have, the more it distributes workload, so it's not going to break quite as easily. But we did, we did come across one major problem is when we were towing uh, these parachutes, these figure eight swivels, which were attached to just anchor rope, have a tendency to lock up, jam up. There's been a lot of other studies out there that have, have discovered the same um, issues. So we developed a large pair ring stainless hardware to help spread out the shroud lines. So it makes it harder to twist the shroud lines. And uh, we, we just got lucky, I guess, in all our research, we came up with the right thing that actually permits the swivel to spin under force. So it's one of the first uh, pieces of hardware that's been able to do that so far. When it comes time for deploying, the hardware sinks very quickly, pulling the shroud, lights, uh, shroud lines out of the canopy. We don't use any kind of deployment bags, uh, simply because it makes the chute sink much quicker. Additionally, we add fishing weights to these parachute canopies on one edge, which helps prevent the uh, chute from twisting a little bit more, and we also aids in a deployment as well. Uh, this is an Australian parachute sea anchor. They do have many different models. This particular model is uh, specifically designed for sailboat offshore use, so they do have a lot of different variations in, in reference to their fabric. For the offshore sailboat, uh, set up. Uh, they're using a nice thick Dacron, it looks like, on this chute. In reference to shroud lines on this 15-foot diameter chute, they're only sewing 12 versus the Fiorentina, which has uh, 24 lines sewn to their, uh, their parachute. Their swivel setup is similar to the, the INI swivel, so uh, it's going to likely have a tendency to lock up on you when in use. In an effort to try to make deployment easier, what this company has done, as pretty much all the others in the industry, is design a deployment bag. Basically, the, the parachute sea anchor sits inside the bag. You drop it in the water so it can self-deploy. The only issue that I have found with this particular model is since the hardware and rope is attached on this end, it has a tendency to spin the bag up, keeping the chute from deploying. The bag will float for long periods of time, and the, and the one thing that I have discovered that works really well to deploy this is uh, the addition of 20 feet of chain. Now, it becomes cumbersome to work with, but to me, I want to get this thing sunk underwater as quickly as possible. I don't want to have any chance of a wave knocking it halfway out of the bag and then tangling it. Now, they did add a chain over here as a sinker weight. This, has had, this is just not enough weight if you want to use it for deploying the chute, but I do understand that their concept is to help 
keep the parachute canopy from osculating so much so it doesn't pulsate like that jellyfish and, and, and turn inside out. Here we have a, a Paratech, a, a US made parachute sea anchor. They use lighter fabrics on their canopy, uh, typically around four ounces, sometimes, sometimes a little bit less. On this particular 12 footer, they have 12 webbing straps sewn to, to the chute itself, and then it'll come down and parts into a two, two split set up here. The hardware that they're going to be used is galvanized shackle. I prefer stainless simply because it doesn't rust as easily. On the top portion of this parachute sinker, like I talked about before, all the companies with the exception of Ferentino are using deployment bags with the idea that, hey, we're just going to throw everything in the water and hopefully, you know, it'll eject rather quickly. And then they're going to have the exact same problem that the other parachute anchor companies have. You have to add a lot of weight to these things. 20 feet is what I typically use to help sink this right away. Otherwise, this will float for a while. The neat thing is, at least with the Paratech, it actually does typically deploy quicker than the other overseas uh, brands. The one thing I don't like, really don't like about this product, is when you're using smaller pieces of hardware like this, like adding a link to your recovery line or trip line. That kind of stuff can easily come undone. Just not just too weak a, a setup on that. This parachute sea anchor was made in New Zealand by Copens. They also have many different types of brands, so you want to make sure that if you want something for offshore safety that you ask, hey, this is for storm survival. They're using what looks to be like a, a Dacron type fabric. It's stiff, but it's a very nice fabric. It looks very strong. What they have done is they're also using webbing, just like Paratech, the US uh, manufacturer. On this particular uh, 15 footer, which is what they call a 15 footer, they're sewing 18 pieces of webbing on it, which eventually parts to eight uh, shroud lines. I don't know why they do that, but that probably makes no difference in reference to performance. The hardware they're using is a swivel. So it's going to be very similar to the figure eight swivels I was talking about earlier. It's going to have the same issues. If there's a lot of force placed on this thing, it's not going to spin. It's going to lock up and jam on you. This parachute anchor, like all the other companies, with the exception of Fiorentino, is also using a deployment bag. In this case, the deployment bag is uh, attached to the top of this particular parachute sea anchor with additional trip line on the, on the back side and a floating flag so it could actually see the float, I guess, when it comes time for a retrieval. What I don't like about this particular device is you're just there's so many gadgets to this thing. I think it's going to be really hard for people to remember. For example, there's a built-in float right here. So before you deploy this thing, you actually have to unsnap all these different buckles, blow the fender up, then make sure uh, before you drop everything, all the different ends are unlocked before you drop it into the water. And like the other deployment bags, it will, it will float for a long period of time, so you will require a lot of chain to, to help sink this device as well. Now, I think one important thing I need to mention is that the industry standard is to measure parachute canopies by the uninflated diameter. That means if I lay these parachutes out on the ground like a great big circle, I measure from one end to another. Uh, Copens is going by the inflated diameter. That means when the parachute's inflated underwater, this is, you know, our 15-foot measurement. Well, so when I go ahead and do the uninflated measurement on this chute, it's 18 feet. So when you're buying a 15-foot Copens, you're actually buying a much larger chute compared to all the other uh, parachute sea anchors in the industry. that in your 15 years of sea trials, not yes. only did you discover a lot about these parachutes that you've told us about, but you also discovered something that you call the constant road tension theory. And this is important yes. for everyone. It applies to every yeah, it single anchor. It doesn't matter uh, who the manufacturer That's is. Right. What we discovered through all our testing was that if we maintain constant road tension, the parachute sea anchor stays inflated the entire time, which obviously if the parachute stays inflated, it'll help keep uh, your bow faced in the wind conditions and storms. To do this, what we've always recommended is in calm weather, say you have a 40-foot boat. Uh, I'm carrying 400 feet of rope mm -hmm. on, on my boat for worst case storm scenario. When the weather is calm, I go ahead and I just pay out a couple of boat lengths. If there's gale force conditions, which could lead to 12 or 16 foot seas, I'll pay out a third of the rope that I'm carrying on board the boat. And if it's a storm situation, I pay out half my line. Okay. By doing this, I'm maintaining constant tension. I'm keeping that rope tight, just like a cable, by using short lengths of rope. Now, if I don't want to uh, go out on, on the bow and adjust line mm -hmm. lengths and so forth as the weather gets worse, you can add yeah. six feet of chain next to the chute itself. So if there is slack rope, 
in the setup, it will sink, keeping the parachute canopy inflated. And that's a great safety device. It, it makes a big difference in the performance of all the parachute sea anchors that I've uh, deployed. Um, but we also, even though we, maybe we deploy the rope and chain and we do everything all correctly, there are a couple other things that we need to do because the boat may start to swing back and forth, be it a trawler, multi-hole, mm -hmm. or monohull sailboat. A lot of times, a good thing to do is to attach a secondary line to the primary rope right. that's leading to the parachute so you can mm -hmm. form a V-shaped bridle. And what that does is it helps stabilize the boat so it's not swinging back and forth because mm -hmm. if the boat's swinging back and forth, that's going to create uh, shock loading, which eventually will definitely break your road. Or we can fly what's what we refer to as a free-flying mm -hmm. riding sail. Basically, it's just a storm sail that we fly like a kite off the back of the boat. And what that does is help us uh, to maintain a head-to-wind position. So those are some of the little bit of tricks that we've learned over the years to, to make things work a little bit better. The typical standard operating procedure from all the manufacturers out there is just to pay out 10 to 15 feet of rope for every foot of boat and just regardless of what the weather conditions were. Uh, that was one of the reasons why we were able to, to figure out what, had, right. what was going wrong back in, that, in those situations. Right. You use all of these parachutes, you got to get them back. Yes, we have to retrieve them. The neat thing is uh, all the parachute sea anchor manufacturers agree on this part. Uh, we're going to have a polypropylene line, usually a shorter, anywhere from 50 to 100 feet, that's attached to the very top of the chute and runs outside the parachute to a big uh, boat fender. So all we do in this situation is we motor up to that float, pulling the rope on board and, of course, stacking it on deck. And then as soon as you boat hook that trip line, we're going to go ahead and pull on that, and that will cause mm -hmm. the chute to turn around, close right. like an umbrella, and, and it makes it much easier to bring on board. Uh, but after we bring something on board, now we have to pack the chutes. That's and, right. And I would love to do a real quick demo on how we do all of this. And we'd like to see it, so go right ahead. Okay, well, let's go ahead and let's start with Paratech since it's right next to us here. Okay. On this particular parachute, I mean, technically, we should straighten out this parachute canopy and the shroud lines and fold each canopy individually just to make sure it will deploy the second time. But, you know, I always follow instructions. I like to keep things really simple when it comes to the parachute sea anchor. So on this brand, if you're just going to stuff the chute in, just try to make sure you do it evenly throughout the chute like so. Let's see. That way, we can get it deployed a second time. And I probably won't do the whole thing. We'll be here all day if we have to demonstrate the complete packing. But after you get the canopy inside, then you kind of zigzag the shroud lines on top. And on this particular setup, I would go ahead. They have little grommets on the side. Just get a little shock board thing we can put on here, and that will help hold that in place really nicely. Next, we'll go over here to the Australian shoe. On this one, it's a little bit different. When we go to retrieve this particular chute, I just kind of flake the shroud lines back and forth on this particular chute, just like so. And then you'll have to work the canopy itself, trying to keep it as straight as possible when you can. Put that inside the bag, then you'll be done. And go ahead and put it back in their other duffel bag that they have here, and then your deployment uh, setup is uh, done there. Next with the Fiorentino, now we don't use any deployment bags because we want the parachute sinker to sink rather quickly. I don't like to use a lot of chain on parachutes myself. It's my personal preference. Just because retrieval is a little bit more complicated when you're dealing with heavy chain. But in, in reference to the Fiorentino, all we do is once the canopy is spread out on deck, we just fold the shroud lines one time in the middle of the canopy, fold it over once, and you just roll it up like a sleeping bag. Makes it quick and fast enough for uh, packing. You just drop that in, whoops. Drop that in the bag like so. And basically, I'm ready for another deployment. I don't have to worry about anything tangling. Done deal. Now we're going to have a lot of fun. This is, this is the New Zealand brand. This one has so many different gadgets. My concern is going to be the complexity uh, of being able to pack the entire device in a timely manner and so that it will redeploy. First, you've got to get the trip line flaked back and forth. And then, we, I've read their instructions, but it, I kind of come up sometimes with my own packing technique simply because it's kind of hard to follow. But basically, we'll, we'll pack this thing. Once the canopy is finally inside the, the parachute itself, there's some slots here that you'll have to press, uh, place these shroud lines into. What I normally do 
is the first part of the shroud lines are 18 lines. I put that on one side here, and then there's a second slot that I'll grab the other eight shroud lines and stuff that in there. And uh, we got to get two different lids <laughs> that we put in here and just kind of connect all of that. And well, I'm joining you again. This looks yes. pretty complicated. <laughs> it really does. It takes uh -huh. me about 20 minutes to pack the thing correctly. Really? Just to make sure that it's going to deploy the second time. And this one, just like all, this one especially, you better add 20 feet of chain on this thing. This thing will float forever, just as a lot of uh, parachute anchors I've had uh, deployment bags. And you just have to leave this one on deck and not pack it up if you wanted to use it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already breathing. <laughs> so I'm already getting a workout. And in well, fairness, I was, I was packing the other shoots. Okay, that's yes, why I'm you breathing were. hard. Now, again, you've given us a lot of information yes. here. Um, if somebody wants to know more, where should they go? Oh, log on to paranchor.com. We have all kinds of uh, research reports, manuals with lots of uh, photographs of equipment and stuff, and uh, videos as well. So it's not easy for me to set up a, a bridle. Uh, so in order to keep my boat stabilized so I'm not swinging back and forth, we started trying different combinations of riding sails on the stern. And when we fly them like a kite, so it's a free-flying riding sail, wow, does that make a big difference. It's capturing wind from different directions. And it's, it's really made a big difference in, uh, in maintaining a head-to-wind position.